Ah, uh, yes. Mr. Beast. Mr. Beast is now the largest creator on the platform, and his formula for creating content has become the gold standard over the last few years. And while it's safe to say that he's been heavily criticised for the issues that his formula has created on YouTube, but this video is not about the Mr. Beastification of YouTube. No, today's video is about the fact that recently, Mr. Beast aka Jimmy Donaldson has been exposed by an ex-employee, Dawson or Dogpack404. Jimmy has been allegedly faking his videos, running illegal lotteries, manipulating children for his own personal gain and many, many more things. And now all over the internet people are saying that because of this expose, Jimmy is absolutely cooked. But is he really? Could these allegations be the death of YouTube's biggest creator? Well that is the question that I will be answering today as we dive deep into the allegations that Dawson has launched against Jimmy the Beast Donaldson. So without further ado, let's get this show started. Oh, and only 0.9% of you are actually subscribed, so if you do enjoy this video and want to see more videos just like this, then hit that subscribe button. The first thing that Dogpack speaks about in this 53 minute long video is that Jimmy has been rigging and faking his videos. Now this is actually quite an interesting point because some of the examples that he uses of how Jimmy fakes his videos can be quite interesting to say the least. Explosion is fake. Shredder is CGI. This car is digitally lifted. This pit is fake. This guy is fake. Uh, this raccoon is a paid actor. Sure, this island costs more than a dollar. This city is not abandoned. These buildings are CGI. But it's not your only way out. You can literally get an Uber to the airport for $20. Now to be completely honest, this whole section is kind of up in the air because there's not really a way to tell if Jimmy's faking this stuff, simply due to the fact that there isn't a lot of concrete proof that Dawson decides to share. But in my personal opinion, if Jimmy is actually faking these videos, then that is incredibly reprehensible in my eyes. Don't get me wrong, for some of the videos, it doesn't really take a lot away from them, but it does also kind of feel like you're being misled. This is because Jimmy based his entire brand around not faking videos and was incredibly hell bent on that point. I remember when I first started seeing your videos, I was like, this shit's gotta be fake. It's a Dude, huge so, problem for us now. So do you do, you do deal with a lot of that like this is yeah. fake this is it, fake. The more, it's direct correlation the more i spend the more people think it's fake if i were to do a video where i would to give a random person on the street a million dollars i'm almost incentivized to make it a hundred thousand because when i go above a hundred thousand people just don't believe it anytime i give away a million dollars in a video or a private island people just i'll get millions of people just being like no fake there's just no way a fucking youtuber could do that so let's see what dawson has to say about these faked videos so there is a series of videos that dawson claims are faked and then there's a singular one that he pulls out of a collection Collection of different videos called the challenge videos. The first series of videos that Dawson claims is fake is of course the Mac series. Mac, a friend of both Mr. Beast and Arak, and a supposed employee of the company, was put into a series of challenges to win a shitload of money. The way that Dawson claims these videos are faked are by having the timers changed in post, as well as having Mac stalled to create artificial stakes for the video. What we did was scripted. Holy shit, this stuff would be easy to pump out. And then Dawson also goes on to allege that the 100 boys vs 100 girls video was completely staged. Dawson then claims that the production team then went on to give special privileges slash unfair advantages to one of the sides to change the result of the video to give it a better ending. The evidence he uses to confirm these points is pretty flimsy because they're just clips from the video instead of actually insider information which he definitely would have had access to. And this kind of makes it harder to believe what he's saying simply because there isn't anything that that isn't publicly available. And this is what I meant by this entire section is just kind of all up in the air because there isn't a lot of evidence for either side and it just is a case of who can create the most convincing argument. However, things get much worse because it turns out faking videos is only just the tip of the iceberg of this whole situation. So let's speak about the illegal lotteries. Now you may be wondering, well what actually constitutes as an illegal lottery? And for that answer, we're going to turn to UK law specifically. An illegal lottery needs to have one of these two traits, if not both. The first trait being if a significant portion of people who want to enter are prevented from doing so. And the second trait being if a significant portion of those who have entered are prevented from winning a prize. The first trait was met by the fact that Jimmy was preventing people who wanted to enter into the competition from being able to do so because they didn't buy a shirt. And then for the second second trait, he prevented people who bought a shirt from winning a prize by constantly changing the time frame in which you needed to have bought a shirt to win prizes. In five minutes, we're gonna do the same thing again. We're gonna put $1,000 in a random order. Hey, Daryl, don't we owe someone $1,000? We do. Yeah, so, all right, so the newest order, in 30 seconds, we are gonna put $1,000 in your package. Stephen, uh, Stephen K. Okay. Ooh. 
Stevie King. In terms of the stream, the prizes were money or a camera or an Xbox or a PlayStation. I think he even put his car on the line at one point. Now, of course, the other side to why this is illegal is, of course, because he didn't give a free way to enter, which is required for all lotteries. However, it's a bit of a strange point because on YouTube, a lot of people do this stuff and it is a way of giving back to the audience if you intended to give those prizes out, which by the sounds of it, nobody actually got the prizes they were promised because Jimmy's a bit scummy with how he handled the stream. But yeah, on its own, this doesn't look great for Jimmy, but it gets significantly worse when you realize that the thing that everybody was paying for was of course the signatures and those weren't even done by Mr. Beast most of the time. And we know this because one of the members of the crew, Tyler, was caught signing Mr. Beast's signature on a shirt. So even the signed shirts were a scam. When will this injustice end? Now Dawson makes a lot more points on this subject and to be honest, it's probably one of the best pieces of criticism he fired off against Jimmy. The fact that Jimmy is running these lotteries is already pretty detestable when you realize that his audience is primarily children. So he's essentially just scamming kids with prizes he promised, but was never actually going to deliver on. And all in the means of making more money. He's on that hustler university life, if you get me. Now, there are actually a lot of posts on Twitter and Reddit of people who were supposed to win the prizes, but actually didn't. And it's safe to say that they're not happy with Jimmy, which is honestly understandable. If you've paid $40 for a signed shirt as well as a prize, then you'd expect both of those things to be there. But what was actually delivered was a shirt that probably wasn't even signed by Jimmy himself, and then no prize. The point that I made previously about Jimmy's audience primarily being children was actually something that Dogpack spoke about earlier in the video. And he goes on this weird rant about how Jimmy's channel banner which says subscribe for a cookie which is obviously a joke is actually a way of using positive reinforcement to manipulate children. I genuinely don't believe that bringing up call to actions in this kind of serious video was a very good choice. I mean for instance mine literally says subscribe or else which you definitely should but it's not like I'm gonna come over and kneecap your whole family. And this kind of became a bit of a pattern with this video because Dawson comments on a lot of things that he just definitely shouldn't have and then it just makes the entire video seem like he's stretching things a lot to get it to fit. Do not take that out of context. And at the time of this recording, he did actually make a follow-up video to the first one where he covers a whole other range of allegation and includes another ex-employee of the Mr. Beast company. And I have to say from the amount that I've watched of it, it's pretty good compared to the first one. So if you want to see me cover that video, then make sure that you leave a comment down below. And hey, I might just make the video on it, but let's be honest here, I probably might not because this video drove me absolutely insane. I spent three and a half hours researching illegal lotteries. Why did it take me that long? God, I don't know, because I got distracted? Why do I do these things to myself? And it may seem like this video is now coming to a natural stopping point, but oh, oh no, it's not my friend. Because this whole Mr. Beast situation gets a lot, and I mean a lot worse, as a lot more criticisms came out about Jimmy after the dog pack video, and some of them have to do with a situation that I didn't want to talk about. And of course, the subject that I'm referencing here is the Ava Chris Tyson situation. So let's talk about it. Yeah, so it turns out that Jimmy was actually working on a Prime video series that I didn't even know about until a few days ago. And for those of you who also didn't know about this, let me shed some light on the situation. So Mr. Beast was creating the Beast game series for Prime Video, which was essentially just one large YouTube video split across an entire season. However, the slight difference between the YouTube videos and the series was the number of contestants. Jimmy wasn't just working with 100 contestants, no, he was working with 1000 contestants. And the gist is that they compete in challenges, just like the YouTube videos to win the ultimate prize of five million dollars. <sighs> My neighbors must hate me. Now the reason that this series has got itself into controversy was due to the safety on set. I wonder where I've heard about complaints about safety on set to do with children's entertainment before. Putting that joke to one side and forgetting about it forever, there have been multiple safety concerns that were alleged by the contestants. Contestants were refused regular access to food and water, contestants were also told to give five days of underwear to the team and then they just magically never received it. But things get worse when contestants were alleging that the team were not giving them access to their medication. In some cases, that medication was insulin. Now this is just kind of common sense, but if you refuse people access to their medication, then there's a good chance you might kill them. And then there were also cases of contestants being admitted 
admitted to hospitals after the show due to physical injuries that they obtained while filming the show. And now with this in mind, this show is starting to sound a tiny bit less like a goofy fun challenge game and instead sounding like it's more akin to the Squid Game. This situation has gotten so big that the mainstream news started picking up on it, especially the New York Times who released an article about it. And now YouTubers have a bit of a history when they hit the mainstream news with it never being for good things and this really does not help it. And now the article from the New York Times was specifically about the things that the contestants had to endure, so if you want to read it then I'll leave it linked down in the description down below. Now this situation is very nuanced and very big and this video is getting a bit too long, so if you want to find out more about this situation in particular then feel free to have a look at the description, there are plenty of videos about it that are linked there. But now, as much as I don't want to say this, I think it's time that we tackle the Ava Chris Tyson situation, because there's been a few developments. Now, if you haven't heard about the Ava Chris Tyson situation already, then here's the fastest way that I can get you up to speed. Ava Tyson has been allegedly committing a Dr. Disrespect X Drake Fortnite collab. And when Mr. Beast originally replied to the situation, he implied that he knew nothing about this. Yeah, so about that. Wow, who could have guessed that one? A YouTuber lying to his audience to cover up the fact that he was involved in this? God damn, that rap scallion. And we know that he lied because 500,000 messages from a Discord server where Ava was interacting inappropriately with minors have been released to the public. And it turns out that Mr. Beast was actually involved in these inappropriate conversations. The Ava situation is incredibly deep and I think it deserves its own video and I will not be making that video so I will instead refer you again to the description where you can find videos specifically about that situation. Because if I talk about that situation I feel like I might actually just go insane. But now I want to talk about something that I find deeply concerning and that is that Jimmy has responded to Dawson but not in the way that you might expect that he would. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, let's talk about it. So the way that Jimmy replied to Dawson was by slapping him with not one, but two cease and desist letters. This has led to many people on the internet saying that Jimmy and his company are beginning to cover up this situation by silencing the critics as well as removing anything that could be slightly incriminating. We have seen this with him not only editing videos, but also having strict moderation in the comment section to remove any comments that speaks about the drama. Not only this, but a current employee called Chucky has been going at it with Dogpack on Twitter. Chucky released a debunking of of the first video from Dawson, and then Dawson replied to that tweet with his own debunk of the debunk on that video. Also, can we just take a minute to appreciate the fact that the line, the raccoon was a paid actor, wasn't actually a joke and was a genuine valid example of how Mr. Beast fakes his videos? Now, as I mentioned, Dawson did reply to Chucky's tweet with a debunk of his debunk of that video, and it started a bit of a back and forth on Twitter between the two, but something I really want to highlight is the fact that even though the evidence does not look great for Mr. Beast, people are are still backing him. And a lot of people have been invalidating the genuine criticism because he does charity. And using the fact that he does charity to dismiss the exploitation of the contestants on the Prime Video Show is absolutely disgusting. The way that the Mr. Beast team has been handling these controversies has been incredibly confusing to me. Because it's no secret, Jimmy has a lot of money to get a very good PR team. However, it turns out that that PR team that they currently have isn't great at crisis management because everything they've done has managed to generate even more controversy. And I want to quickly say how much respect I have for Dawson for being able to keep his head in this entire situation. The way that he handled this situation was incredibly good and he even backed down on certain points in the videos because he definitely agrees with the critics on it. But not only that, he didn't stand down and instead doubled down even with the risk of facing legal ramifications for his expose. And for that, I have to say major props to him. But with all of this in mind, I think it's time that we go back to the question that I proposed at the beginning of this Red Bull fueled brain rotting rant. Coming to a definitive verdict on situations like these is an incredibly difficult task, simply due to the fact that they are still very fresh and there's a lot of questions regarding what Mr. Beast's team and Dawson are both challenging each other on. And of course what I mentioned previously was the fact that Dawson then released another expose which complicates this situation 10 times more. Oh, and by the way, he's doing a part 3. But to make an attempt on answering the question, is Mr. Beast's career over? 
No, it's really not. Regardless of what Jimmy has or hasn't done, his audience are still children and so it actually makes no difference to him. Children are incapable of understanding the complexities of situations like these and they're still going to watch him regardless. So although he might lose the older parts of his audience, he most likely will not be affected by this in the slightest. He will still be making millions of dollars a year, like that's never going to change. Unless his channel gets terminated. And that's not even mentioning the fact that Jimmy already has millions of pounds, oh I'm sorry, dollars. Like he can retire right now and just spend the rest of his life being fine. And that actually brings me on to one of the last things I want to mention about this whole situation. And that is if Mr Beast can retire now, why hasn't he? And funnily enough, that question was actually answered by him when he was on an episode of the weekly slap that's hosted by Jay Schlapp. That's kind of it. I'm doing YouTube forever, man. I mean, I'm, gonna, I'm doing lots of stuff like with Feastables and, mm -hmm. you know, we have other projects, but like, I don't see why it has to be an either or. I'm, I'm planning on doing YouTube till I die. But I genuinely believe that everything that we have spoken about today has stemmed from Jimmy's love for YouTube and wanting to be at the top. And I feel like now that he's there, he will do anything to stay on top, even if that means turning a blind eye. That's assuming that Jimmy didn't know about the rigging or anything like that and that he wasn't behind it, which he probably did, but he still might not have. We have not got a response from him. And now I think that the true Mr. Beastification of YouTube is losing sight of the impact that chasing your dream can have on the people around you and the people you create for. And this is all I really have for you today. And now the last thing I want to quickly mention is the fact that I now have a Patreon. So if you've enjoyed this video and you want to support the channel and see more stuff like this and get some perks out of it as well, then feel free to go check out the Patreon today. Thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you next time.